tutorials how to make this DIY bracelet. It's called a Rolo and Cup Chain Bracelet. And what I love about this is that it's such a unique and pretty design. You can add just about any color of cord that you want to spice it up. You can change out what type of metals you use, what type of rhinestones you use, and you can get all the supplies at any craft store. For this, you will need a pair of scissors, some cord that is small enough to fit twice through whatever chain you choose because you're going to be threading it in each direction, a couple of beads that you like the color of that are going to fit onto that same cord, some cup chain or rhinestone chain, and this type of chain. You can use Rolo chain or you can use something like this that I got. The main thing is that it can't be a type of chain that sort of twists as it goes along. They need to be pretty much circular and when you hold the chain up you want to just see um, circles on every other link and lines on every other link. And you'll want to cut all of these lengths of chain to wrap almost completely around your wrist, leaving a half inch to one inch gap. The first thing I'm going to do is measure my cord to be eight times the length of all of my chains. And remember it's always better to have too much than to run out halfway through your project. Unless you're using a leather cord, you'll probably have some type of woven cord that's going to have a tendency to fray and be really hard to get through your chain links. So just wrap a piece of tape around the end, trim off the excess, smooth it out, and then cut a pointed tip. The first thing you'll want to do is thread the same end of your cord through the very first link on both lengths of your regular chain. You'll want to find both ends of your cord, and that's going to help you find the very center of your cord, and that is the first step. And I'm just going to rotate this this way to make it easier to explain what's going on. So you're going to take the right side of your cord, that tip, and you're going to skip the next link on both chains and then put the cord through the next link after that on both chains. And make sure that you're not twisting any of your links. You want everything to be lying flat when you do this, otherwise things will get twisted and weird and your bracelet won't turn out right. So go ahead and thread that through, then grab the left end of your cord and thread that back through the same two links going the opposite direction. Now if you have really small links, this could be a little bit tricky, which is why we put the tape on there to keep everything from fraying. Now before we move on, we need to get the cup chain or rhinestone chain in there. So I'm just going to loosen up the piece of cord, which is the left one, which ended up on top and I'm going to slip the first rhinestone or cup in between both lengths of the cord. Then I'll pull them tight and make sure that that cup is facing up. So there's the beginning. It's a total mess, but it will start to sort itself out as we keep going. And there is going to be a pattern to how we do this. So just like we did on that first round, I'm going to take my right piece of cord, skip the next link after the one that I already put the cord through, and I will put the cord through the link after that. And again, if you have a bigger piece of cord, it might be a little bit tricky. It's going to go underneath the cup chain, or rhinestone chain. And then you're going to skip that next link on the other side of chain and put it through that next link. And this is a little bit hard to explain, so I'm hoping that you can see everything fairly clearly as we go along here. So we've skipped that next link and the cord has kind of just gone around the outside of the link gone through the next one underneath the cup chain and out the opposite side and then I'm going to take my left bit of cord pass it back through that same link and this time it's going to go over the cup chain back out the opposite side 
again through the same link. A little bit tricky to show you on this one. We all live the time, living now on the sea, looking for the way. That is the next step. Now you want to make sure that you're not pulling this too tight as you move along. So this top part is a little bit funky. If you're pulling it too tight, make sure you loosen it up a little bit. And we're just going to keep repeating this pattern. Living inside you and they feel that they can change the world. Can you feel it everywhere? Once you've gotten to the end of your bracelet, you'll bring the other end over and you'll have these two loops from the beginning. Remember where it was kind of messy? And from here, you're going to take one side of your cord and matching up the ends like this. If the cord is coming out this side, make sure you're sending it back through from that same side. You're going to put it through both of those loops. And then using the other cord, do the same thing, but send it back through in the opposite direction. And once you've done that, that is the sliding closure on your bracelet. And to finish that off so that it doesn't just fall off of your wrist, you'll need to add your beads. And make sure that you're leaving enough cord on there to open the bracelet up as wide as you need it to get it over your entire hand. And tie a knot in each end of the cord to keep the beads from slipping off. So I'm just going to tie one knot there and then tie another on the opposite side so that the bead isn't just wandering wherever it pleases. They will save you this and I'll trim the excess. You can do. No harm, no and that is your finished bracelet. Nice to be this is right to battle. This is right to place. It was you and born for. It's your time to save the child a chance. Have a chance, my man.